Hi, I'm Nick Kirkpatrick. Thanks for watching. You can find this video and more like it at blackop.org. Today I'm going to talk about the Free State Project and, uh, you know, why I think it's a good idea. I just wanted to, uh, before, before I get into uh, the, the content of this video, I just felt like I need to preface it with a few things. What, what are my reasons for supporting the Free State Project? What is my goal? Uh, what are my motivations? What kind of activists do, do I uh, support? What, who do I empathize, sympathize with? Who do I align myself with? And these things, you don't know until you ask me. So uh, all of this video, all of the content, everything in this video is my personal opinion. I do not posit all of the content of this video as fact. My views and my predictions and my analysis don't necessarily represent anyone else's. And I really feel that I really feel that I shouldn't have to say any of this, but uh, unfortunately today uh, these kinds of things are a necessity. I can only speak for myself. <laughs> but anyway, here we go. Why I endorse the Free State Project. I kind of see, uh, you know, different strategies out there uh, for making the world a better place. Um, and, you know, I don't think that the Free State Project is an end-all, be-all. I think that it's just one of the strategies uh, for... <sighs> for making a, a more uh, moral and compassionate, livable, sustainable world. I think that's the, the end goal here, and I think the Free State Project is one among many uh, different strategies. And, uh, you know, this, this upsets people a little, but I, I, think, that, I think that creating a, 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 the, a good, compassionate, moral, sustainable world is an intergenerational problem. I know people, people don't like to hear that kind of stuff, but I don't think that, that freedom is going to be brought to the world all at once. And, uh, you know, this is one of those uh, kind of uh, things people try to ask you to, to, to back you into a corner and try to put you on your toes uh, when, you, when you talk about, you know, libertarian, anarchist, voluntarist uh, points of view. You know, they'll, they'll try to try to lure you into a trap where, well, how, how is such and such a thing going to happen? And it all makes the assumption that, uh, you know, everything's just going to change all at once. You know, the, the entire um, uh, state is going to, uh, you know, going to collapse or, or, you know, the government's just going to give away all its power uh, all in one day. You know, we're, we're going to have uh, a stateless society overnight. And I could, <laughs> I could go into that more. Trust me, I'm going to be talking about that in a future video here. So I'm not going to get into that now, but I will say that I think that, that uh, improving the world is a problem that's, uh, that requires baby steps. It's, it is probably, probably going to uh, take some time. And, and you and I may never get to see the end goal. The, the world becoming that, that a moral, ethical, livable, compassionate, sustainable place to live in, that may happen <laughs> by, uh, after, after we're dead from old age. So I, I really think this is an, an intergenerational problem. But um, what, what I think geographically concentrating people can do is, is hasten uh, the, the goals of the, the movement you know, of libertarians, anarchists, voluntarists, anyone who opposes uh, violence in the world, anyone who's against the initiation of force, concentrate, concentrate geographically. And, uh, and you know, there are, there are other, um, other projects uh, oriented at concentrating geographically. Uh, this one, the Free State Project, is, uh, is what um, I, I think is the best one. But, uh, you know, I don't want to uh, in any way demean or, or take away from the work of all the other people who are concentrating in other places. So, yeah, you know, concentrating in, in the same place, I think that's going to have some benefits, some uh, benefits for creating uh, businesses that are outside of the state, uh, you know, the state-sponsored, state-approved system. 
it's going to create some um, opportunities for creating services outside of uh, you know what the state endorses. So uh, there's this thing behind me uh, that I have kind of as a visual tool because, uh, well, screw PowerPoint. I don't I don't like that. So I'm gonna uh, gonna get into that and uh, just uh, what I have behind me is kind of a road map to uh, what I think the Free State Project can bring about, or really any, any kind of geographical concentration of, uh, you know, of people who, uh, who support freedom. This could be used for anything, but again, you know, I, I support the Free State Project uh, in New Hampshire, so that's, you know, that's the, the um, perspective I'm taking it from. So here we go, here's a little road map, and uh, I'll, I'll show, you, show you what I've got. Alright, so here's what I have. Um, I've got everything from uh, level 1 to level 8, where we have uh, you know, a full, complete, uh, moral, sustainable, compassionate world. And uh, level 1, I tried to break this down into maybe like 5 or 6 levels. I really tried to get it, get it down, but I think to, to put all the items in here, I, I needed... Uh, I needed eight different levels. So level one and level eight don't really count. They don't really have anything in them. And uh, it looks like I'm running out of battery here. So let me cut it off right there. Okay, sorry about that. Had a little bit of a battery issue, but I think it's been resolved. So this is, uh, anyway, this is the road map that I have. Um, and just let me let me preface this with, with saying that the, the stuff that I'm, I'm going to put here in these, uh, these different levels, I'm not presenting this as fact. I'm not presenting this as, I have a lot of different steps in here, and you know, I might have some steps that are wrong that may never happen. I might have some out of order. And, and it's not even, and it's not even really, um, it's, it's not even really important, the specific content of this roadmap that I've built. It's really, it's just the idea that I'm trying to express. So, level one, is is talking about it we can uh, we can affect change but uh, first you got to be able to talk about it so we're, we're definitely uh, you know I, I don't know where we we fit in the levels right now but we're definitely at level one at the very least the uh, the second level I would say is uh, is when you get past the talking is uh, is doing you know uh, people people doing stuff um, I think another thing you can do is uh, some basic level ostracism. Um, for example, I was just uh, reading about a, a phone app that you can use to scan the QR codes or the barcodes maybe of products you find in the store and it tells you whether it belongs to Monsanto or a few you know, other ethically questionable companies. And I thought that was great, you know. Um, there are, uh, if you, you uh, have money to invest, there are mutual funds out there that do not, um, you know, they're like ethical funds or something like that. I forget what the word, word is, but they're funds that don't uh, put money into things that uh, might be unethical. Ostracism against uh, companies um, that, uh, that, you know, that, that are conducive to the, the state or conducive to violence or conducive to, to all kinds of backwards things by by geographically concentrating with people and and making connections with people this this kind of ostracism is going to be a lot uh, easier I think the, um, uh, the one of the one of the other things is oh you know and I didn't didn't make enough room here is <laughs> is uh, that you're going to have employers, um, maybe liberty-minded uh, hiring managers or business owners, and they're going to hire people without regards to the, the applicant's breaking of the law. Uh, because there are a lot of things that are written down on paper, that are written down as laws, that, uh, you know, that shouldn't be. And so I think that's a, one of the basic, easy things we can do. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of a microcosm of, of agorism. Is uh, is how I've uh, heard it heard it described recently. But you know, when if someone's applying for a job, you know, don't don't worry about whether they have a uh, you know a cannabis distribution uh, you know in in their record or some other kind of uh, victimless crime. 
So that, that was level two. Level three, I think, is, uh, is people who promote certain points of view that are non-mainstream. Uh, uh, you know, libertarians, anarchists, voluntarists, anti-statists, you know, any, anyone that's not in the mainstream will, uh, you know, not be ridiculed or embarrassed for their point of view. They shouldn't be, and, uh, you know, we, we may or may not get to that point in, in the future, or, or maybe we're already there. It's all, it's all uh, a matter of uh, where you're, you're looking. Um, another uh, step that I see is, uh, is partial note the word partial there, non-enforcement and or prosecutorial discretion of certain statutes by law enforcement or pro prosecutors due to the unavailability of resources to enforce. So maybe there are certain laws that are going to take priority in terms of enforcement because there aren't, uh, you know, there aren't, there isn't enough money, there aren't enough employees on staff, um, there, there aren't enough uh, courtrooms available to, to, uh, to provide all that. See, another thing that I, I see happening is widespread agorism. And agorism is uh, doing business without permission. Agorism is pretending, at the very least, that you are a free person and you don't need uh, the blessing of a group of men and women calling themselves the state in order to uh, buy and sell goods and services to do voluntary interactions with your fellow human beings. So we're going to see that widespread agorism in the form of businesses that don't have a defined physical location, like a storefront. If you have a storefront, it's going to be a lot harder to um, evade the state, unfortunately. Let's see, next item. The downside of uh, PowerPoint is... Uh, using PowerPoint, but my magnets fall uh, every once in a while. That's the downside of using my uh, kitchen fridge. Widespread use of jury nullification. Jury nullification, um, and this uh, has been happening, uh, you know, a little bit in New Hampshire. It's been happening, you know, really, you know, in all different kinds of places in the world, but it's been happening in New Hampshire a little bit, and I think it's gonna get more and more popular. There is no criminal penalty for, uh, for jurors rendering a not guilty verdict. Even if it's clear as day that the person did what he was accused of, there's no penalty for saying not guilty. So if he did something that shouldn't be against the law, uh, that, you know, that's something you're able to do. And I think in New Hampshire, that kind of stuff is gonna be encouraged. It's gonna be much more socially acceptable in the future. All right, let's see. Now, as we get up the, to level four, this one might be a little, <laughs> this is probably the first controversial one. Um, people pulling their children out of the state-owned schools. Uh, cre creation of uh, homeschooling cooperatives. You know, people with children pooling their resources together. Maybe their money, their time, their labor, their own skill sets. Uh, pooling their resources together to educate their children. Now remember that... You know, libertarians, uh, anarchists, voluntarists, etc., don't oppose collective action and collective decision making. You know, they they oppose it when a group of people say say, "Hey, this is what we're all going to do, and everyone has to do it, and you don't have a choice." That's what they oppose. They oppose the violence inherent to the state. See another kind of a co co op sort of thing. You know, one one of the things that I see happening is a, a healthcare cooperative. Uh, health care for the poor. Um, this is actually one that I think is really good. Is a um, is <clears throat> people uh, pooling their money and uh, you know chipping in for an agorist uh, medical professional. Okay, sorry about that. I had a little bit of a camera trouble there, and I think it might have cut me off. But I was uh, saying a, uh, <clears throat> a an organization that's uh, collects money and uh, you know they all chip in for uh, a doctor uh, of some sort to provide free services um, uh, mutual aid societies uh, some some way of providing outside the system uh, medical services so that everyone all the way from the rich to the poorest of the poor can afford something um, you know to afford the things that they need for their health um, this is one of those <laughs> ways in which the world is uh, is very backward they put all these walls 
uh, up against us to prevent us from getting the, the optimal level of health care that is, uh, corresponds to the, the level of, of technology and, and knowledge that the human race has right now, you know, we're just not getting good enough uh, uh, health quality. And I think once the people um, work together against the government uh, to, to get all of those barriers out of the way, um, I think we're, we're going to have a little bit of success in uh, improving the quality of health care. And I think it's going to happen when people concentrate into the same area and, uh, you know, and they pu pull their resources together in order to, to cause change. Uh, another thing here um, I think we're going to see is widespread. Notice that uh, widespread word there at the front. Uh, Non-enforcement of certain statutes due to the unavailability of resources to enforce. And this may be as a result of more people uh, breaking unjust laws or because the government is running out of money, because people are, uh, are deciding to, uh, you know, stick it to the man and uh, not, uh, not pay uh, whatever taxes they can avoid paying. Um, but, you know, the government's going to run out of resources and uh, they're not going to enforce laws against victimless crimes. Another thing I think we're going to see is partial non-enforcement of certain um, statutes um, due to the unpopularity of the statute. So, um, you know, right now, uh, you know, what we see is prosecutorial discretion, and I think it's going to increase, but this is just, you know, something uh, completely um, different is uh, because people uh, not enforcing the law because the law is unpopular um, and you know this this happens you could say this happens on, on a small scale you know you'll re read about weird laws that nobody knew about that are never enforced like a, it's illegal to play a baseball game on Sunday or it's illegal for women to drive cars in certain you know uh, municipalities where they wrote the law a long time ago and never repealed it so you'll see a microcosm of this, but I think uh, I think this is going to expand in the future. Uh, here's another one. So uh, I was talking earlier about some low-level ostracism, and uh, here's one that gets a little bit more personal. I think there's going to be more ostracism, ostracism on an even greater level, um, on the personal level, um, ostracism against people who uh, initiate force against their own children. Um, ostracism against people who indoctrinate their children because we can't get rid of statism. We can't get rid of all the people teaching ideology, making the world a worse place if we let people <laughs> if we let people teach all those bad ideas to their children. And uh, you know, sta statism starts at the home. It starts when uh, you know when people teach that stuff, when, when they shove it down their children's throats before they're old enough to decide for themselves what they want. So, you know, you can't have freedom on a, on a macro level, I think, until you, uh, you enhance your personal relationships and you, you remove toxic people from your life. And, and you can't have freedom on a macro level until you, uh, you work things out on a personal level. So, yeah, we're up to uh, level, level four here. I think I've got one more item here. And uh, the next thing we have is the... Uh, the widespread availability of alternative services, um, alternative uh, means of providing alternative services to the government established and endorsed systems, but are not explicitly prohibited from the government. Things that are not uh, explicitly illegal, like, for example, uh, reputation rating systems, um, uh, some kind of driver certification, you know, something like proving uh, that the drivers are safe and my magnets are starting to fall. <laughs> I thought I uh, thought I had this under control. And I think I'm having some more battery trouble here. Let me cut this off. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, battery problem has been resolved, I think. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how the rest of the video plays out. So level four, so here's level five. Um, one thing I think we're going to see here is the non-enforcement of statutes. Yes, the, um, the refusal 
uh, of, of law enforcement officers and prosecutors to enforce certain statutes because of widespread non-compliance. See, another thing I think we're gonna see is widespread agorism with a storefront. So I said in, uh, where, where was it? Level, level three, I said, widespread agorism with, you know, without a, a established physical location, because, you know, the government will go after you. I think as time goes by, um, we're going to see people uh, participating in agorism with some kind of defined uh, physical location. Another thing I think we're going to see is the availability of alternative services, of alternative institutions for things that are explicitly prohibited um, uh, by the government. For example, um, agorist doctors are going to be people practicing medicine without a license. Now, it doesn't mean they're not going to be safe. There still has to be some kind of uh, way for them to to prove that they're safe, that they know what they're doing. But but not uh, but you know but doctors that aren't going to blow a bunch of money and resources uh, by getting a, a license. And they're going to be protection services. You know, in some legal jurisdictions, the creation of pro protection services is prohibited by law. And so um, I think at some point we're going to see things like protection services. You know, we're going to see alternatives to government services that uh, you know they, they don't want us to, to have. And it's going to happen anyway because the will of the people is stronger. You know, the strive for justice is more important than law. All right, we're going to get down to level six. Another thing I think we're going to see is very large businesses that are functioning outside of the state. Um, for example, uh, not paying any taxes. So, you know, there's small businesses today, you know, participating in agorism, not paying taxes, not complying with regulations, not asking permission. But I think what we're going to see is, you know, the big businesses that today are normally in bed with the state that participate in, you know, campaign financing. They, 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 um, you know, buy the elections to, to get those, uh, those, uh, uh, you know, politicians, those scumbags in charge. What we're going to start at the very least, you know, doing their best to function uh, outside of the state. And, you know, that, that might be very hard because there are lots of businesses that benefit from big government. They benefit from having regulations that favor them. They benefit from whatever the government tries to do to keep uh, the big businesses' competitors out of the way. So there might be some barriers to that, but I think it's going to happen because I think even the big business owners are going to see eventually when, when we get to a certain level of... Um, of enlightenment. When, when the human race reaches a certain level, I think what we're going to see is even the big businesses are going to see the detriment the state does to our lives, and they're going to see the benefits of getting on the winning side of this battle. Um, all, all of this stuff that I'm talking about, you know, ostracism, um, jury nullification, uh, non-enforcement of laws, and stuff like that, all of this, wh while all of this is happening, let me just take an aside to, to say that, you know, this is um, you know, this is while the, uh, you know, because I already mentioned talking about it. That's, that's definitely, uh, you know, the most important step. And people are, are still doing that. And keep, you know, keep it up. All of this is happening while minds are changing. So you are delegitimizing the state in the hearts of, of all the people. You are talking about the harm that the government does to the people. So all of this is happening while people are learning. People are being educated. People are, are waking up to the the immorality and the, the inefficiency, you know, all the, the bad things that are going on in this world on the behalf of a small, small number of, of evil people. People are waking up and, uh, you know, the people are being enlightened. People are, are learning and, and becoming better persons um, morally, uh, becoming better persons in terms of what they know and how the world works. So, uh, you know, all, all of this requires a you know transformation in, in the the hearts of the individual and so all that's going to be going on while this stuff's going on another thing I, I should mention as an aside is um, all of this stuff is not uh, related to lobbying and uh, you know running for office and and elections and stuff like that um, I have a, a preference for outside the system activism 
And, and that's just the context of, of this roadmap, how, how I drew it. I thought that would be the easiest way to make this, is to not include any of the political activism. But, but please, please do not interpret my uh, preference for outside-the-system activism as, a, um, you know, as, some, as me uh, condemning um, uh, political activism. I think that political activism is fine, and I think it's a great way to get an idea out. I, I think that there are presidential candidates and, and lots of candidates for lots of different offices in the past that never actually thought that they were going to be elected, but they felt that they succeeded in some way because they uh, put out um, ideas. They, they put ideas into the, the thoughts of the people, and, and in that way, even though they didn't get elected, they were able to affect change in the world. So uh, let's see, another thing, um, ooh, prosecutorial discretion, another, another uh, non-enforcement of laws one. So what we're going to see is uh, prosecutorial discretion and non-enforcement by law en uh, enforcement officers of certain statutes um, not enforcing the laws uh, due to their moral objection to the law becomes an acceptable practice. You know, when, when an officer or prosecutor says, you know what, man, I can't enforce this law, it's wrong, I think that that is going to be uh, something that, that's going to happen. And may, maybe not in our lifetime, but it's going to happen. So, step number seven. All right. So, here's, here's the one. So, I think I, I've got a good metaphor for this one. So, statism becomes embarrassing. We're, we're going to get to the level where the people, the, the good, ethical, moral, rational people of the world are going to become the majority. And what we're going to see is that statism is going to become like racism. Um, if you are a white supremacist today, I mean, you are a huge, huge minority. You are... Um, well, you, well, <laughs> Being a white supremacist is is a choice. That's something you choose. And if you tell people that you're a white supremacist, um, there are large segments of the population that are going to to try to shame you out of of your position with some level of success or or non-success, depending on uh, what their strategy is and how strongly you feel about it. But if you're a white supremacist today, it is embarrassing. You know the the uh, culture as a whole has made it so that that uh, you know you you talk about about white supremacism and the people shut you down. Um, it's not it's not a a good thing. You know racism is bad, and so um, you know there was a time when racism um, was the 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 more popular stance and and. Be and being a racist was was okay, and it might have even increased your chances of, of making friends, of um, reproductive opportunity, of making business connections, of getting elected to office, of, of re climbing up the social uh, you know ladder. But today, uh, you are um, you know you are ostracized to some extent. For if you're a, a white supremacist, you will you will be embarrassed for your position. And uh, I think statism is going to go that same way, that people are not going to want to be friends with a statist. And it's going to be embarrassing, and there are going to be pockets of them left, and, you know, may maybe they will, um, you know, they'll, they'll die off one by one from old age, and the, the bad ideas will die with them. All right, and here we go to number eight, the final level. And there we go. We just get to a fully just and moral world. And so... There we go. It's my eight-step roadmap to, uh, you know, getting from uh, getting from a a a world that is uh, that is sick, that it, that it is in need of help, and then we can talk about it, and we can take these different levels, um, you know, things like ostracism, um, ignoring the law, uh, ignoring the law with jury nullification, law enforcement. Um, you know, ostracizing people who accept violence in their personal lives, um, thing, things like uh, doing business without permission, uh, things like getting, you know, getting even maybe uh, big businesses to act outside of the state and not pay taxes, you know, um, 
the individuals are gonna you know stop paying taxes long long before that. Um, see, not you know, non enforcement uh, to the law, and then we just you know embarrass uh, the statists out of out of existence, much like uh, like like racists. So there we go. That's my eight step roadmap. Like I said, it's not. I'm not presenting this as fact. I'm not presenting this as a, a literal, linear, um, you know, uh, A to B uh, thing. And maybe some of these are, are out of order. And maybe, you know, I know definitely some of these has, have happened at some, some level or another. But I support the Free State Project. And I think that geographically concentrating people is going to make all of these things so much easier you know business connections personal connections um you can spend uh th there are places in new hampshire and there are going to be even more places in new hampshire where you can um you can engage in ostracism you can engage in agorism you can you can spend certain amounts of time only interacting with the libertarians anarchists and voluntarists I'm not saying you should. I think you should be able to mix in with the general population. But if you wanted to, that there are going to be enough of them so that you would only have to interact with only them for like a week. Um, you could only do business with them uh, for you know, a, a, you know, some certain amount of time. So it's the, these things are going to be possible. And and when you get large enough numbers of people together, I think you're you're just going to speed up the inevitable. I think the world is getting healthier, it's getting emotionally healthier, it's getting smarter, it's getting more enlightened. And the Free State Project is, uh, is just taking all of those, those smart and moral and enlightened people and putting them together in the same place. So, all right. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, my name's Nick Kirkpatrick. You can find this video and more like them at blackop.org. And uh, now I'd like to hear from you. What are your reasons for endorsing the Free State Project? What do you think the Free State Project can accomplish? Go ahead, leave a comment. Thanks for watching.